Hey folks, welcome back to Tawanya Tells. This is my second episode and I am calling this my favorite Black Bostonian. But before I begin, I would like to read through the land acknowledgement. As I mentioned in the first video, at the start of each of my recordings, I will always read and or at least list the land acknowledgement. So here we go. Let us take a moment to acknowledge the native Indians who cultivated, nourished, and inhabited this land we call the United States of America that was forcibly taken from them. The state of Massachusetts, an Algonquin word meaning great hills, was inhabited by native Indian tribes, Mohican, Mohegan, and Wapanoag. It is because of them we exist on these lands. All right, so as I said, I'm going to talk about my favorite Black Bostonian. But before I get into that, one more thing to hold you off. I want to first tell you how I'm defining a Bostonian. So that Bostonian to me means someone who was born and raised in Boston, Massachusetts. Now we have Boston transplants, folks who probably came here when they were really young and grew up here and certainly may also um, identify as a Bostonian. But uh, typically when I'm thinking of a Bostonian, I am thinking about someone who not only was raised here, but was also born here. And in this case, I'm speaking specifically about my father, legally known as James T. Garrett Jr., whom I unfortunately lost this past July. Now, he's my favorite Black Bostonian, not just because he is my father, but for what he stood for. So my dad grew up during a time when racism was super heightened. When my dad enlisted in the United States Marine Corps, he and his fellow white Marines had to go in different directions to party or just to unwind when taking a break from their duty. This is a man who enlisted to serve his country and of course to better himself and to create a stable life. And in turn, the country reminds him that he is not equal to his white counterparts. But it didn't stop there because even after my dad gets out of the military, has started a family, has his children, all that good stuff, he begins to work as a welder. And again, he encounters racism. I know this is a little contrary to the narrative that I would like to share about the city of Boston. I'm not trying to focus on the racism. So hopefully the listeners and viewers will not also. But he encountered more racism in the form in which he and his uh, fellow black iron workers were told they had to return to school in order for them to continue with their job. They were already being paid less and they were told they had to go to school to learn what they're already doing. And as my mother told me, notice I said my mother told me, wasn't even my dad, as my mother shared with me, my father came home so upset feeling so dejected that he would have to go to school and learn one plus one. He's already been working in the field, y'all. But these are ways to try and keep the black iron workers down to discourage more from coming along. And my father stood up against it. And what he did is he sued the union. And unfortunately, I can't say he had a ton of support from his peers, but he had enough. And it wouldn't have mattered either way because my father is the type of man that was okay walking roads like those alone. If you're coming along, that's great. But if you're not, sit back. He's going to keep moving. I want to backtrack to when I mentioned that my mom was the one who told me this story. My father was not the type of man to brag about his accomplishments. He did not feel the need to receive applause and go on and on about what he done for his fellow black colleagues for what he had done, even for his children. 
although he did express that to my mom at the time, that he wasn't going to take this laying down, as they would say, he was going to fight because he did not want his children to experience the same discrimination. But my dad was not the one to tell me the story. That's what I loved about him. That is why he is my favorite black Bostonian because despite what he may have encountered as a young boy growing up here in Boston and as well as when he traveled abroad and he didn't always live in Boston. He did live outside of Boston for a short while. But he never dwelled on any of the racism or the discrimination or just the obstacles and barriers that he faced, that he encountered, that he pushed through, stepped over, moved out of his way. He did not allow such adversity to be an excuse for why he didn't do better in life. He didn't let such adversity make him feel ashamed of who he was or the fact that he even was a Bostonian. My father was proud of that. He was so knowledgeable. So knowledgeable about this city I love. He would talk about his time growing up as a young man in the South End with his brothers. His mom at the helm of that home. The South End people. Once again, if you listen to the first video, I mentioned how there was a time where certain neighborhoods were predominantly black. The South End was one of them. My father and my uncles had the opportunity to grow up there and experience that world. A world that now has been priced so uncontrollably high that for the average person, they will never live in the South End. And there's no need to even consider and think about our low income. Because even when they do try and hold a couple of units for low income, moderate to low income people, it's often temporary. It's It usually has an expiration. But yeah, my dad never complained about those things. He didn't wallow in troubled times. He wouldn't let you get away with pitying yourself for too long. One thing he used to say, and I imagine many people have heard this saying, I'm not trying to act like he's the only one who said it, but I remember I was a young girl and, and you'd be all, I'd be all sad or mad about something, you know, I want to sulk for a day or maybe even longer. My dad used to always say, you can't cry over spilt milk. Now, of course, I thought he was wrong. But later, as I grew, I began to understand why. Why he said that. Okay, it's spilt. You're pissed, upset, mad, sad, whatever. Clean it up and keep going. So push it out your way and keep going. That is the lesson I take from my time with him. One of many, but that is one of the bigger lessons that I walk away in this world without him now, always remembering and thinking of, is that you have to keep going. And now, yes, if something is wrong, it's not right. You should stand up. You should fight back against that. You should make it better. 
all of what my father encountered and did, he made better for all those who came after. You are welcome. I thank him. If it were not for him and all those before, many of us wouldn't be in positions we're in, be it job opportunities, how we live, where we're living, having the values that I know I have, it all started with him. And so there was no way I could do another episode and think I wasn't going to have some sort of a tribute and or dedication to my dad. I love that man way too much. Trust, I gave him his flowers while he was here. This isn't something that I'm doing after the fact. In fact, part of why I even got back on the horse, continue with this process, is because I can hear him asking me, what's going on? What's taking you so long? Because I can't keep crying over spilt milk. I can't stop living, moving, and pushing forward. And as a proud Black Bostonian myself, if I want to make sure that there is that Black voice out there for the city, then I need it to resume get back to work, back to business, back to basics. And so I'm going to wrap up by just simply saying, I love my dad. And I thank him. I thank him for instilling the courage he's instilled in me. The love he's instilled in me the dedication, and the pride. Pride in being a Black person. Proud of being from Boston, Massachusetts. Listen, make sure you like, subscribe, listen to me on Spotify. I appreciate it. 